What's up everybody and welcome to the Sons of Seaver YouTube channel where there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad gear. So that first clip was from the very first hike that I took our featured piece of gear on today. And that is the FHF Chest Rig Gen 2. So this was a piece of gear that we were pretty excited about. It's something that's worked its way into almost every single one of the pursuits that we follow. So if you go onto their website, they talk about how it's built for fishing, it's built for hunting, it's built for tactical. And they sent it to us to kind of push those boundaries a little bit and let them know how it worked in other situations. So we've used it running paddling and hiking uh, and it's become a pretty indispensable piece of gear for us honestly especially because it'll carry all of the stuff that we need to record ourselves on those pursuits uh, but outside of just holding the stuff that we want to record it's something that we can totally customize to the situation that we need and we love that about it so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the specs. I'm gonna give you a little tour of the chest rig itself, then I'll send it over to Chris so that he can talk about all the different ways that you can modify it. All right, so as far as the dimensions with the bag go, it's uh, nine inches across, six inches there, and then it's uh, three inches deep. It's got this mole on the front and on the bottom. Uh, this bottom portion you can actually stick things in so you can open it up there it's got a magnet inside where you can put some forceps or something if you're fishing uh, the back side has this air mesh that's really nice trying to keep you cool it has this pocket that you can open up right here and stash something and also has these two little side pockets where you'd probably put like a pen or something like that it's got these air mesh shoulder straps that go over uh, that are very comfortable and keep you cool military grade buckles as well as ykk zippers uh, and then you know these little points here as well where you can hook carabiners or whatever you need to do uh like we said it, you can customize this a lot of different ways as far as the inside goes it's kind of a blank slate so you've got this main pocket here it's got these two velcro sides on the front and the back where you can put different kits inside and chris will talk more about those and it has uh, just an open pocket for you as well as a zippered pocket on the front side and along the back side it actually splits down the middle and you've got two other little pockets down there i'll go ahead and send it over to chris now so that he can talk about all the different ways that you can modify and customize this thing so I wanted to have a conversation about modularity when it comes to this pack because I think that's one of the things that makes it stand out compared to other packs. That's not to say that other companies don't optimize for their packs to be somewhat modular. They definitely do. But FHF Gear takes it to a whole nother level with their modularity and I will show you how they do that. So if you are looking at the pack on their website like I am here on my laptop. You scroll down, you'll come to a section that says complete your kit. And it gives you a couple different accessory options that will integrate with the pack. Now, if we go to their shop tab and hit on accessories, you will see a much more exhaustive list of all the accessories that they have available. Not all of these will integrate with this pack, but a majority of them will. Some highlights for you. The mod wings are on here, which I like. I feel like they add a little bit of uh, stability here. They're actually called the foundation mod wings, and they add a little bit more molly to the pack so you can attach things to this. So I really like that. They've got a range finder pouch. They've got a bino poncho, which you can add to this even if you're not carrying binoculars. It'll attach to the bottom and pull up over it to make it waterproof. This is the weatherproof version, so that doesn't matter as much for me. It would matter for Eric's pack a little bit more. We have the E4 and the E3 pouch. The E4 pouch is a little bit of a bigger pouch that takes up the whole front panel. 
E3 pouch will actually fit on one of the foundation wings. These are both zipper pouches. They're kind of general purpose. I actually like to put my rangefinder in the E3 pouch that would fit right here. And then our controllers for our drones will actually fit really nicely in the E4 pouch. I wouldn't do that for running just because that adds another inch here and some weight to the front and will make the pack really bouncy. It's already kind of bouncy when you run because you can't get it super tight to your body. We'll talk about that later, but that would just kind of overdo it. I need to experiment with adding that pouch to the bottom here, seeing if that works because that would be a good way to expand the storage of the pack. You can scroll through this list to see all of their options, but one thing I wanted to point out is they have three already optimized kits for you on here for some of the things that I think their customers want specifically. So one is the turkey kit for turkey hunting. Another one is the fishing kit for going fishing, which is totally up FHF Gears Alley. That's kind of their niche. And the last one is the tactical kit. They have set up to carry extra AR-15 mags and pistol mags if that's something that you're into. So there is a crazy amount of modularity built into this product. You can set it up for just about anything you want to. And that was important for Eric and I and kind of one of the reasons why they sent it to us because we told them we were going to use it for some use cases that they didn't necessarily mean it to be used for. I think that piqued their interest and they wanted to see how it did in those environments. Two of those places, paddle boarding and running. They did not think that people would want to use it for that, but they set it up to be very much a blank slate so that you could use it for whatever you want. Now I'll tell you up front before we get into the ratings that it doesn't do fantastically amazing in either of those things, but it works pretty well for them. So getting into our ratings, if you're new to the channel, we rate every product that comes through here on three categories. Those are function, feel, and versatility. We give the product a score out of 10 on each of those things, and we average that score for its product score at the end of the video. Take this scoring with a grain of salt. This is very much based on our opinions and our specific use cases with the product. Before we get into the first one, which is function, I'm gonna send things back over to Eric, and he is gonna talk to you about some of our beloved affiliates. All right, we just briefly wanted to mention some of the affiliates that we have going with this channel right now. Uh, a big one for the summer is free in stand-up paddle boards. So we have a review on their uh, stand-up paddle board slash kayak that they sent to us, and it's a product that we've had a lot of fun with. If you're looking to get out on the water, go to Freein's website, use that link that we have in the description to get there, and we also have a 10% off code, uh, so use Sons of Seaver at checkout and you get 10% off any orders that you place there. Summertime, you also might need some sunglasses. We are affiliates with Ombras which are a different type of sunglass. If you've seen our last few videos, you might have seen these, but they don't have sidearms. And because of that, I feel like they are super comfortable. They have this cord that wraps around your head. They are fixed to your face. Uh, they don't rub on your ears, and uh, I really love them. Been wearing them for about three years now, and they're perfect for sports. They're perfect for getting out on the water. If you're boating, if you're paddling, you don't have to worry about your sunglasses falling in because they're stuck to your face. Uh, and they're just really, really comfortable. Go ahead and check them out. If, if you're looking for shoes, um, we're really into the barefoot shoe market. So we've got affiliations with Lems, Zero Shoes, and Vibram. So if you're looking to strengthen your feet, wear shoes that are healthy and that also look good, then go check out those websites. Now back to the review. Starting things off with the function of the pack, it's going to be an interesting conversation because first we have to nail down what this thing was meant to function as. And as we've talked about, it is made to function in a lot of different ways. So we're going to talk about our three specific use cases to talk about the function. And that is hiking, which was mainly Eric used it for hiking. Paddle boarding, we both used it for that, and I mainly used it for running. So starting with hiking, this is not going to be a great standalone hiking pack for you unless it is a very short hike or a gentle nature walk of some kind. 
The main reason is because there's no fantastic way to carry water in this thing. I think they have an accessory on their website that is a water bottle holder that may attach to the bottom here. I'm not sure, but even if it did, you can't carry a substantial amount of water like that. So what Eric did was he wore a hydration device of some kind on his back and ran his line up front and he wore this on his chest and that seemed to work out pretty well for him. He could carry around all of his drone gear and other things that he needed here and then he had his water on his back ready and accessible to him. The nice thing about that setup is you never have to take anything off in order to get to whatever it is you want. Everything is either up front or the water is on your shoulder. So that's a good way of going. So not perfect for hiking, but pretty good. Eric and I both use this thing pretty extensively for paddle boarding is the main way that we carry our drone and filming equipment when we are out on the water because it does carry all of it. It can carry the drone, it can carry the controller, it can carry the batteries, and there's enough room to fit a couple other things, especially with those extra pouches they sent us. We can fit some other things into this pack as well when we go out there. But it is nice not having to take a backpack off to get in there. Everything is up front here. I can kind of just file through the bag looking for whatever it is I need for the moment. Again, not perfect because these are not waterproof. Mine is weatherproof. Eric's is not weatherproof at all. So if you're gonna do what we've been doing, we'd recommend some dry bags. We haven't been using them, but we're gonna get some when we do our lake crossing adventure vlog. Keep an eye out for that. We will be wearing these as our main packs for carrying all of our drone stuff for that adventure vlog. The last use case was me running in this thing. And I did a lot of running in it. We get a lot of shoes to work with and I run in almost all of them. And when I run in those shoes and I'm getting content for them, gotta bring my drone, gotta have it following me, gotta get actual active footage of using that footwear. And this does a pretty good job at carrying all my stuff. The one flaw I would say is that things are a little bouncy. It's almost got too much volume on the inside. What I mean by that is, if you only had the controller in here, just as an example, there wouldn't be anything pressing up against it to keep it secure. The batteries pushing against the controller, they keep each other in one spot. Again, if it was just the controller, it'd be bouncing around all over on the inside of this thing. Now, like we've talked about, there are some pouches and some inserts on the accessories page that you could put in here to possibly help with that. What I would like to see is actually a divider that goes in here. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more when we get to versatility, but I think that would help a lot in keeping things more secure in here. Giving you one more example with carrying a firearm in here, which I have done, Velcroed to the back panel. If I'm running or just bouncing up and down, eventually that Velcro comes off and the gun gets dislodged from its place. It's still in its holster, still safe and everything like that, but just not where I want it to be. So for running, pretty good a little bit better than the 511 pack in my opinion um, but not perfect so for all of those considerations we're going to give it a 7 out of 10 when it comes to function now I'm gonna pass things over to Eric and he's gonna give you our rating for the feel of the pack All right, when it comes to the feel of this chest rig, uh, it's pretty good. We really like the shoulder straps uh, with that air mesh. They're very comfortable and uh, they keep you cool. So those things work really well. We do wish that it had some padding on the underarm straps as well, as those can get just a little bit uncomfortable. We're kind of using these things outside that scope of what they were built for, you know, with running with them. Uh, with hiking with them a lot of these things like hunting and fishing you're gonna be pretty stationary So maybe that's not gonna bother you as much, but that's something that we thought would be nice for it But mentioning running for me at least I'm not gonna take this running. It's way too bouncy I know we've got some clips of Chris while he's out and you can see the thing kind of going up and down You really got to load it properly in order to uh, to not make it bounce so much. But for me, that's a no-go. Uh, I don't like how that feels when it's bouncing so much. Two other things we didn't quite like about the feel as much. We wish that it could tighten some more 
uh, especially on this part here. I just wish that I had a little bit more that I could pull. We want to wear this thing pretty high and it doesn't get as high as we'd like it to. Uh, so we wish there was a little bit more room to do that there. And then when it is fully loaded, it's really droopy. I've got a few videos and a few pictures where you can see that. And I'm not too fond of that, to be honest. I, I kind of wish that these attachment points that they had for the shoulder harness were a little bit more forward, or I wish they could be somewhere else so that it held the load up more. Just because when you put on another attachment uh, and you really feel the thing, like it just droops down. Uh, so for all of those reasons, we gave it a seven out of 10 for the feel. Now I'll send it back over to Chris so that he can talk about the versatility of the pack. Wrapping up our last category with the versatility of the pack, it's gonna get high marks here because there's just so many options. There's so many things that you can do with this and it did pretty well in our unconventional use cases. I'm sure that if you set it up for one of the things that they have it optimized for on their website, then it's going to function flawlessly for you. One thing I wanted to point out is as I was going through the information the other day while prepping for this video, I noticed a picture and it was a guy who actually took this and he slung it on his side. So he, he put it on with the four point harness and everything and just slung it over to his right side. He was using it for shotgun hunting specifically, and you could see all of his extra shotgun shells attached and all that. And I was like, that's really cool. That is a very interesting way to set it up. And if I use it for hunting, I'm probably gonna do something like that. High marks for versatility. I would just like to see some other accessories, a better way to carry water, maybe like a pouch for a hydration bladder of some kind, perhaps, and then a divider. A divider that cuts it down the middle and literally divides the front from the back so that whatever you put in the back is secure to you between you and the divider. And then whatever is in the front is secure between the divider and the front of the bag create a little bit more pressure in there and maybe help with organization a little bit as well there's lots of things that they can and i'm sure will do with this thing and because of that we're going to give it a very well deserved nine out of ten for versatility now i'm going to send things back over to eric he is going to give you our final product score and he is going to give you our wrap up as well so for our final product score of the fhf Chester Rig Gen 2 is going to be an overall 7.5 out of 10. And we think that it really deserves that. Uh, it's a very versatile product. We've talked about all the different ways that you can modify it and that you can customize it. You can use it in a lot of different situations and we really love that about it. Uh, but we do feel like there's some improvements that could be made. Uh, when we talked about the feel, there were a few things that were lacking there. As far as the functionality goes for what we are using it for, uh, it definitely lacks a little bit. Um, but honestly, this could be the perfect thing for you. If you're a hunter, if you're a fisher, if you just want to use it for tactical stuff, I don't think you could go wrong with this. With all the different ways that you can customize it for you personally, it's an awesome product. We really like it. We really recommend it. Thanks for watching that video, guys. We really appreciate it. If you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe. There's a lot of different places that you can find content from us on the internet right now. Uh, we have this YouTube channel. It also has an Instagram account, so go check us out there. That you get more up-to-date posts on the gear that we're currently using. You can also follow us on Strava. That's a really cool app where you can go and track your workouts of all different types, uh, whether that's running, uh, going to the gym, paddling, rock climbing. It's got categories in there where you can track all of that and build a community. It's really fun. So come and see the stuff that we're doing and we'll follow you back. Chris has his own YouTube channel. It's called Seaver Shoots. So you can go find him. Uh, that's more tailored towards gun industry stuff. You can check him out on YouTube and Instagram. And I also have my own YouTube channel called A Pilot's Life for Me that's just drone videography. So if you like that, then you can go check me out there. Uh, we really appreciate the view, guys, and we will see you in the mountains.